Hiya! So today I thought I'd share the process for this illustration here, which is called the Cursed Inkwell. For this illustration I used Deleter Comic Book Paper, Type A, Winsor & Newton India Ink, White Calligraphy Ink, Winsor & Newton White Gouache, Assorted Rulers, a Series 7 inking brush, size 2, and a crow quill. I started the process by doing some word stacks and coming up with the composition and story I liked the most. And then I shot some reference for it and did some research on artists I liked and the way they solved certain things. This is where Pinterest and books are really, really useful. Reference is everything! I settled mainly on three artists I really admire. Charles Dana Gibson, Franklin Booth, and Jack Davis. I did a quick mock-up of the background and made a comp of it with my previous sketches. I printed the sketch on cyan non repo blue in the manga paper and I started ruling it. I got straight edges and fine liners and did a thinner fine liner for the background elements and middle thicknesses for foreground elements. It takes a bit of time but the result is really clean. And here's where the fun starts. So I start doing uh, some uh, mosaic uh, patterns using parallel lines for the background element to build tone for the window. I want it to be kind of light, but still not feel like 100% white. And uh, you know, the problem with the crow quill is that sometimes it, it like drips like this. So this is why I like having white paint handy. Those mistakes happen and they're part of the process. So I mainly just go around um, a pencil line for the moon and it creates this really like nice negative effect for it. Uh, but yeah, I think the main deal with this texture is trying to keep it even. And this is something that is not always easy to do. Like there's a part in the future of this video that uh, you guys will see that I made some mistakes, but I found it it's useful to kind of show those things as well. So there are things to like watch out for. It's like mental notes for myself. But yeah, I just covered covered most of it. And the good thing about the white gouache is also that I can pick out and I will pick out uh, some areas to make reflections. So right now I'm not too worried about how I feel this. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time around. The most important thing of each texture is that it feels like a one cohesive value and that continuous value is what separates one area from another. For most of the background, I try to keep to a crosshatch and different variations of crosshatching. Crosshatching is supposedly a very common, tranquil kind of texture. So it's great for backgrounds because it makes them kind of stay in the back and not be crazy active and call for a lot of attention. So most of the background textures are variations of uh, straight lines crossed by parallel lines. And the distance between the lines is what makes the value darker or lighter. So this is the part that I mentioned that, um, you know, keeping the consistent lines can be a bit challenging. Um, it's a pretty large area and <clears throat> the mistake that I made was that uh, some lines seem a bit darker than others and it kind of calls for a lot of attention. Moving on to the inkwell, um, to make it stand out, I used a slightly different technique. Um, I did use the crow quill for the planar edges of the lid, but on the reflections, and the body of the inkwell and the monster, the black blob that comes out of the inkwell, I used uh, the Winsor Newton brush, and that gives a very organic feel to to that bit. Um, everything that's quite foregroundy, I use that, and I use that same um, calligraphy ink for highlights. I found that ink is very good with a crow quill since it's calligraphy ink and it's way easier to use than white gouache uh, out of the tube. So it's great for like designing um, negative lines on top of flat shapes. It gives a different treatment as well because I wanted that bit to really stand out 
I want it to be different than everything else, so you look at it a lot. And then next, I go back to the crow quill, and I attack the figure, uh, having Dana Gibson's uh, females as main reference for the planes of the face, hair, and clothes. On this part, on the skirt, I started doing like a floral texture to it, but I kind of changed my mind halfway through, because I thought it was blending too much with the background. So I decided that maybe a darker tone would kind of guide the eye down and do a counterbalance to the actual inkwell. So you see me building a bit of texture there, but it's gonna be erased, most of it. Um, yeah, I also added some blacks to the books as well to kind of anchor her down a little bit more and also separate her from the background because at this, I didn't want her to be all organic as much as the inkwell because she's kind of farther farther back and you know she's part of the background but she is a very important element of the story so she needed to have a bit more contrast than the rest uh, you can also see on the right you have my wonderful uh, references that i shot of myself dressed up as a librarian um so yeah it's always good to have uh, the references around so you can stare at them like i like to print them out because uh, when i'm doing traditional work i don't like to have uh, screens around me i just want to focus on it and i feel it helps um, to just like sit down and work without having any distractions you can also notice that this piece is quite large uh, so i have an a4 printer and I had to use two sheets and kind of stitch them together with masking tape. And yeah, so, so that helps to, to kind of give more detail because I can go really small and do really fine lines. But because the piece is traditional, I never lose sight of the whole, which is why I like working traditional, traditionally these days. Um, when I'm working digitally, I feel like I detail parts sometimes that are not really that important because I can zoom in. And this way, the end is always in sight because you can always see the piece uh, as a whole all the time. And it's also so fun. Like I feel like traditional media just has this tactile quality that digital can try to reproduce, but it's never the pleasure of actually using materials is huge. Um, so yeah, I hope this was useful to anyone, especially if you want to try and tackle something like this. Um, and the beauty of it is that like you have a piece that is practically done. If you want to polish them digitally, you can, and it's so easy to change since it's black and white. So I really appreciate that technique. So yeah, if you're still with me by the end of it, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful and please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe if you found this cool and you want to see more. See you. Bye.